<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Hey, is yeah, it's like it's actually, you know, that that uh, the bell doesn't dismiss me. Oh, I hate that. I you know. well, then the bell doesn't dismiss me into class. I. I'm right <laughs> Can I stay here all day, though? Yeah, really. I guess no, I'll just do that. <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, today's what we're going to do again, just to kind of go through what we're going to do today and tomorrow. Uh, we're going to learn section seven six day one today. Uh, and then tomorrow, uh, if you are in class tomorrow, you are just going to have a work day um, on the homework, so you should not have any homework. If you're going to be in here both today and tomorrow, you should not have any homework uh, both tonight and tomorrow night, which is going to be nice. Um, and then we're going to do section seven six day two on Friday. Sound good? Okay. Uh, here's the key from the homework. Oh, I'm sorry. Thursday. Here we go. Well, today is Tuesday, but it's really like Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. No, it's Thursday. So Thursday is like a Friday. True. But really. I don't know what I I don't know what's going to be on the ACT for What's going to be on the ACT for math? Um, I would say be very glad that you learned logarithm because I bet there's going to be a logarithm step. There's going to be might be basic logarithm step on this. Like um, just basic simplify the log. Like I bet there there might be some right. Probably not any like addition or subtraction or whatnot. Um, maybe maybe some simplification like that, but it's got to be very basic. Right. Um, there might just be some base some ones like you know what is log base three of um, like eighty one. You know, and then you just have to figure out what that is. But you have a graph and calculator to do that. We do? Yeah, you have a full graph and calculator. Oh, okay. So. Yes, sir. Um, was it okay if you were kind of decimals instead of fractions? Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. Yeah, decimals, fractions, whatever you need to do that. <laughs> now, remember that if your work does not match what you see on the screen, that's okay. Uh, that just may mean that you did it in a different method. As long as you get the final answer right, that's what we care about here. Um, because the method could be vastly different. Just as a reminder, there will be um, part no calculator versus part of calculator. I don't have to figure out whether that's no calculator at all. I'll, I'll check on that. The, the test isn't really scheduled until next Thursday and Friday. So we got a, we got a minute. Okay, let me scroll down past 21 and 23 there. There's 25, 27, and 29. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a particular method, or would you just want me to go at it the best way possible? The best way. Okay. I'm going to try to ignore what I see on the screen there. I got 1.5 to the x minus 1 is equal to 14 and a half. Okay, um, I'm not going to try to make 14 and a half out of a base of 1.5 because that's weird. Um, so I'm not going to try to make the bases the same. Um, I'm not going to take the log of both sides, but what I am going to do is try to take this from exponential form into logarithmic form, which basically means that I'm going to take log base 1.5 of 14.5 is equal to x minus 1. Okay. And now at that point, you can evaluate that log. You can actually figure out what that is. You can go in your calculator and do that log base function. I've got to do the change of base formula. I've got to do log of 14.5 divided by log of 1.5. Let's see what that is. Log of 14.5 divided by log of 1.5. So that's the decimal 6.6. 6. 6. We'll leave it at that. 6.6 .6 is equal to x minus 1. Add the one seven point six is it? That make sense? Yeah, they went a little bit further. What they do? Oh yeah, that's the same thing. That's the same thing. Let me scroll down a little bit more. You didn't necessarily have to set up twenty seven as an inequality. Just kind of interpret your answer in the end like an inequality. Um, I bet a lot of you guys just found when it was equal to and then went from there. Um, not there yet. 
there's 29, 31, and then a lot of 33. Looks like the answer should be plus or minus 20. Oh, wait, not minus 20, just plus 20. You can't have a log of a negative number, so I guess that we're going to throw out negative 20 here when it's over 400. Okay, let me scroll it down a little bit so we can see the rest of 33. Uh, remember to always watch out for extraneous solutions when you're working with logarithms and you have an x squared come up uh, because that would mean that it's going to turn a negative number positive. So when you get solutions that come out negative, it might not actually be solutions within your original problem. So make sure you check that, especially negative ones. All right, let me flip over to the next page. There's 34, 35, and 36. Now, for 34, 35, and 36, it says use graph and table. Um, I show here algebraic work to do that, except for number 35. Um, but I'm going to show the calculator work as well. Do you have a question mm -hmm. over one of these? Yeah. Which one? Got it. I'm going to I'm going to show all three of these on my calculator and show you what I would have done to find the window that you need to. Because that's honestly um, a lot of the work, figuring out how to manipulate your window to see what you want to see. So let's go through and see um, 34. Two times three to the uh, parenthesis x minus one. And then on the other side, just a flat line 162. Again, you should always try to visualize what you'd like to see within the graph. It looks like on the left side, I've got an exponential function starting at two. The y intercept's going to be at two, I think. Uh, my got shifted with the x minus one. Uh, but I should see an exponential. And on the right side, I should just see a flat line at 162. Now, I'm going to zoom six this to get it back to my standard 10 by 10. And then, oh, my axis are still off. Hold on a second. Remember when I did that yesterday? Yeah. Turned off the axis. Uh, let me format that. Let me put that back into axis on. And now, um, it was zoom six. I'm going to zoom fit this and just see what happens there. So here's my exponential. And I bet along the, oh, okay, it went along the bottom. I bet I see my intersection point on this, but I don't actually see it. Okay, I saw the horizontal line come across the bottom, so let's calculate it. Let's see if it's there. So I can calculate the value, not value, excuse me, so I can calculate the intersection point. Uh, first curve, enter, second curve, enter, yes, enter. Yeah, it's on the screen. It's just really kind of, down, you know, almost blended in with the axis down there. So the solution is x, x is equal to 5. Now, let's take a look at 35 here. On the left side, I'm going to get 4x. Clear that out. Uh, 4x, and on the right side, it should be a 2 to the x plus 1. OK, again, what should you see here? I should see 4x, which is a, um, a diagonal line. right? It's a direct variation. It runs through 0, 0, slope of 4. And I should see uh, 2 to the x plus 1. Now, I know it's some sort of shift. It's up in the exponent, so it's in parentheses. I'm guessing it's a left or right type thing. So I'm guessing I moved it to the left one unit. But I should see an exponential on the right side. And remember that I want to know when the flat line, or sorry, when the diagonal line is going to be less than, so vertically underneath the exponential. Let me zoom 6. I bet this. I, I bet I can see this on my standard window. Yeah. Now, look here. Okay. We can't really see it very well. Okay. Um, we can't really see it very well, but here is my blue line. I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit, and here is my red line. Shouldn't really bend like that, but you get the idea. Okay. It's actually going to cross twice. It almost looks like it blends into one at one at that point, but it doesn't really. It, it will cross twice. Okay. So let's find those two intersection points. Now, know that you really could zoom in on that particular location by doing zoom box, Z box, 
and say like, okay, I want to know what's going on within this area. It looks like it's going to cross right there and right there. Let's see. Crossing, crossing. Yeah, it does cross just slightly, just slightly. Let's calculate the intersection point. Let's find those critical points. Now I'm going to do the this one first. I'm going to guess there. Looks like that's where I get my my two, my second point, and let's calculate the other part. Enter, enter, but now guess somewhere over toward the other one. It looks like it's about right there. One. So I know my two critical points are one and two. Now here's the deal though. I have to look at this and say, okay, if this is one and this is two, right? I want to know when my red line is underneath my blue line. Well, that's every point from here onward and from here onward, right? So that means I want all points to the left of two, or sorry, excuse me, all points to the left of one and all points to the right of two. So X is less than one or X is greater than two. That's where we get our answer. The last one there, number 36. Let me go in and change my Y1 and Y2. It looks like I've got um, common log of 2X, is that minus 17? Yeah, minus 17. 2X minus 17 plus common log of x and parenthesis, 2x minus 17 log of x, and then on the other side, just a flat line too. So I should see some sort of combination of logarithms, and then I should see a flat line coming across it too. I'm going to zoom six this. Okay, it looks like it's just happening off to the right there. So maybe I'll, um, I'll just change my window. I'm going to change my X max. I really don't care what's happening until I get to, well, let's say five or so. So X minimum is like a positive five. And let's go X maximum. Let's go way out there. Let's go like 40. I don't know what's going to happen out there. Okay. So that gives us a pretty good idea of what this is looking like. Now, I want to know when the logarithm when the curve is above two. Well, when does that start to happen? It starts to happen at this intersection point, which we can calculate at 12 and a half, 12 and a half. And X is greater than or equal to 12 and a half because all points bigger than 12 and a half, the logarithm side is going to be bigger than two. That answer your question there. All right, and then let me show you the rest of the problems here. There is 37, 38, and 39. Yeah, that's a 39. What'd you say? What'd you do? 35. The 35. Slacker. All right, here we go. Is that one looks like two through like a hundred and five? Two through eleven. No, it's not odd. <laughs> I like this. Like this. Cole cool. said it's, it's two to two because it's from a new one. All right, people. Now, I said all along that your calculator does log base 10 and log base E. Your calculators, you actually have buttons for log base 10 and log base E. You see right underneath the log key where it says LN, LN, 
That is what you call what's called a natural log or a log base E. Okay, so what is E? Well, in general, E is just a naturally occurring constant. E is is um, this guy named Euler uh, found. Why do I not have any pen? Where did my over here. You said you were going to do something. Hmm? So, I really? <laughs> oh, my fault. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. what are you looking at me? I brought him home. Oh, no, that's right. It was in my coat. Why? Mr. Lambert looked at me like I stole him. He was probably like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. I know. Don't even fret, Mr. Lambert. What did he say? Nothing. All right, so let's take a look here. But again, E is a naturally occurring constant. Um, this guy named Euler is the first one who really kind of said, oh, this is, a, this is something that we're seeing a lot of in nature. Let's define this number to be a letter. You guys know how like pi is just a Greek letter that denotes a number? It's an irrational number. 3.141592659793984726. No, that wasn't real. I just started making that back for like five days. Um, but, <laughs> um, but pi is just a number uh, denoted by a Greek letter. Same thing is true for E. E is just a number denoted by uh, 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 one of our letters. Um, e, some people think E is for exponential. E for exponential. I like to think that the guy named Euler, since he kind of like discovered it, um, he named it because that's what his his name actually is spelled. Uh, oh, that's gonna click. Oh, geez. Oh, oh no. Oh no. That's how you spell his name, Euler. I know. It looks like you know. It sounds like it should be right. Euler, something like that, but that's actually how you say it. He's, um, he's, now you need to make like an I, I, mean, I forget, like, what nationality is, where he's from. He's, he's European. All right, um, let me, let me show you what it is based on, uh, this, I think I'm going to change this color. Get it back. No, that's it. Um, it, remember when we started off this chapter by saying, you know, I'm going to give you a dollar and I'm going to double it at certain times, right? Um, I'm going to use that same premise. We use that same premise. If I gave you a dollar and I gave you 100% interest, right? If I gave you 100% interest on that dollar, and I said, okay, I'm going to calculate the interest at the end of a year. At the end of a year, how much money do you have? Well, I'm just saying at the end of one year, and I'm only saying I'm going to calculate the interest one time at the end of the year. I gave you one dollar. It's been 365 days. Now you get $2. So you have two dollars total now, right? You have two dollars total. This is what's called our compound interest formula. Okay. One plus one over n to the n power. Now, I take that 1 plus 1 over 1 because n is the number of times I'm compounding it. Well, if it's 1 time per year, then I'm only calculating it once. But what if I had said, what if I was going to be a little bit more generous and I had said, okay, what if I calculate that um, semi-annually? Well, what does that mean? Semi-annually means that I'm going to calculate it two times per year. So n would be 2, which means our formula would be this. Okay, get out your calculators because I'm going to need you guys to do these numbers. Um, what would this end up being? One plus one half to the second power. What would that be? 2.25. 2.25. I'm going to trust you guys with the numbers here. 
No, everybody's going to see this tomorrow. <laughs> right. What if I was going to be, oh, yeah, that's true. Everybody's going to be I know, we're a mess, video. and it's this red. Yeah, really. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, what if, maybe I'll remake my videos. <laughs> I've been a mess. <laughs> yeah, really. What if I had said, okay, I'm not going to calculate it semi-annually. I'm going to calculate it quarterly. I'm going to be a little bit more generous. I'm going to say, okay, well, what if I change that into, well, there's four, uh, four quarters in a year, four financial quarters in a year. So one plus one fourth. So the fourth power. What would that end up being? 2.44? Okay, well, what if I increased that amount? What if I was even more generous? What if I did it monthly? Okay. So if I did it monthly, that would be one plus one twelfth to the twelfth power. So I'm increasing my amount of uh, compounding times, and what's that do to my final number? What do I get now? 2.6 what? 2.61. Okay, so I see this almost growth, like look at my final number, 2, I've raised a quarter, and then I went up just a little less than 20 cents, and now I'm only going up 17 cents, so maybe this is starting to level off a little bit. Let's continue. What if I had said that I'm going to grow this weekly? Now, I'm increasing my amount of compounding times drastically. I'm going from 12 to 52 because there's 52 weeks within one year. So at the end of one year, after compounding it each week, what, what do I get? 2.69. So I increased my amount drastically, but I still only increased 8 cents. Hmm. Okay, what if I kept going with this process? What if I had said, I'm going to do this daily? Well, then my N would turn into 365. Now, okay, I'm going nuts now. What would that be? Now, give me more. 2.71467. We'll, we'll stop there. And here's why. Here's why. As I continue on, this is going to level off even more and more. 2.69. Okay, what if I said hourly? 87.60? So 1 plus 1 over 8,760 hours within one year. Okay, it should be 2.71 what? Somebody do that one for me. Okay, we'll stop there. Okay. All right. Every minute. No, I don't even need to know what that is. That's 525,600 minutes. That's a line from a song. Uh, it's from a musical. Oh. Seasons of Love. Right? <laughs> I don't even need to run that number. Is that right? Oh, I'm so close. 7, 9. I rounded up. 2.71828. I could keep going, but I'm not even, I don't even need to do the every second one. 31. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you, can't, you have to do every single one. Oh, okay. Are you kidding? Just leave the last column blank. What was it? 31 million? 31 million 530. Okay. <laughs> I regret this decision. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what am I getting at here? Is that no matter how many times I dramatically increase the amount of times I compound, it's going to actually level up. So no matter how much more generous I get, it's going to level off at this constant number. It's actually going to be this number called E. This is the naturally occurring base. Okay, the naturally occurring base. Euler said, man, this number keeps coming up. I keep finding this number in naturally occurring things. Things like uh, radioactive um, decay, uh, half-life, um, exponential growth, naturally occurring exponential growth. This number keeps coming up again and again in nature. So this must be a very important number. This E is an irrational number that is, whoa, that's really messed up. Uh, 
Oh, jeez. I got this. I got this. I got this. Here we go. The number E is an irrational number that is approximated by the number 2.718281828. It does not repeat, though. Uh, and it is the limit of the sequence 1 plus 1 over 1 to the first, 1 plus 1 over 2 to the second, and so on and so forth. What it is, is just a naturally occurring base. It's a number that occurs naturally uh, in exponential growth and exponential decay. Okay, so let's, uh, let's kind of like poke a stick at it. Let's see what it looks like when we graph it. F of x is equal to e to the x. Well, if it's a base to the x power, well, that just means that, well, what's it raised to the zero power? One. Remember, anything raised to the zero power is one, so zero comma one. Right? If I'm just making a quick table of values, well, it's two, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. We know it was zero comma one, because anything raised to zero power is one. Let's see what e to the negative second is. Now, take a look at the division symbol. See right above there? E. So e to the negative second. One point, or sorry, point one four. Let's do e to the negative first. Point three seven. Let's do e to the first. Well, that's e. So two point seven one eight two eight. And let's do e squared. Seven point four. All right. So we've got negative two comma point one four, negative one comma point three seven, uh, one comma two point seven one eight, and two comma seven point somewhere up here. Thank you. Let's use a highlighter. All right. Now, what is this saying here? Well, it's just a base. It's just a number. Right? Remember, get that in your head. This E is just a number. It is just a naturally occurring base. It's something that just happens in nature quite often. So we assign it a letter because it's a really messy decimal. It's a really messy decimal. Okay? Now, again, if you type in E into your calculators uh, and you say, here's E, and I hit enter, it almost looks like it will repeat, doesn't it? 2.718281828. You would expect to see 1828 again, but guess what? That doesn't actually happen. It doesn't actually repeat. It is like pi. It is an irrational number. It will it will go on forever and vary. You know, it will not repeat or will not terminate. Right? It is like pi in that respect. So let's graph f of x is equal to e to the x minus two plus one. This is what you guys hear up here, right? Um, I'm going to graph one by hand, and then we're going to graph one on our calculator. And you can sketch it in. All right, e to the x minus 2 plus 1. So, again, when we don't know what something's going to look like, let's just make a table. So, x, y, uh, we do, let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We may have to add on to this table to see a little bit more of a pattern, but we'll see. All right, so let's go in, and we'll say e to the, and we got x minus 2, so negative 2 minus 2 plus 1, sitting on the outside of that exponent. I have to write it like that because I don't have that in the fancy fancy calculators. 1.02. All right, I'm going to do that same thing, uh, but now I'm going to go in and calculate negative 1. Oh, that's 12. Hold on, hold on, please. Negative one. There we go, 1.05. Well, zero comma, well, this would be a, it almost seems like this should, might be two, but it's not, because this would be e to the zero minus two. This is actually e to the negative second, then plus one, right? So go back in and we'll do zero. Do 
delete input a zero. 1.14. Let's do to the first power. Three, 1.37 to the second power. Two. Now it's not growing very much at this point. So maybe maybe let's add on a couple more values. Let's, let's do three. And for fun, let's do four. Eight point four. Oh. That's four comma eight point four. Sorry, my table. What a mess. Uh, negative two comma one point oh two. Negative one comma one point oh five. Thanks. Uh, zero comma one point one four. One comma one point three seven. Two comma two. Here it starts to grow. Three comma three point three seven. Four comma eight point something up there. Now, is our asymptote still at the axis? Where does it look like it is now? One. At one. And we'll learn pretty soon here that this plus one made the asymptote move up one as well. Okay. Let's go ahead and graph the next one in our graphing calculator. Uh, e to the x minus 3. E to the x minus 3. E to the x. And actually, you have an e to the button. You see ln down there? If you hit second ln, that's an e to the. So you can just do e and then carry it up, but you can also have that button as well. Uh, e to the x minus 3. And the minus 3 should not be in front. I'm going to zoom six that. What does it look like that minus three did? Moved it down three. Yeah, we'll look at that again soon. But those transformations, we're going to be applying them to these exponentials as well. Oops, that's a marker. Okay, so what's the what's the moral of that story? Is that just e, again, e is just a number. 2.71828 and so on. It is just a number. Okay. It's just a naturally occurring base, something that happens in nature quite often, so we just assign a letter to it. Um, you know, if I had the function y is equal to e to the x, right? If I had the function y is equal to e to the x, and I said I wanted to find the inverse of that function, well, I would change x and y and resolve, and that would be log base e of x is y. Now, so when you have a log base e, you can call it a unique name. You can call it a natural log. Because e is the naturally occurring base, whenever you have the base of the logarithm as e, you can call it a natural log. A logarithm with base e is called a natural logarithm, and it's abbreviated ln. ln. I'm guessing because this was all and, you know, started in European languages, I bet, since the adjective comes after, I bet this is like law of natural in uh, their language, whatever language that was. So that's why I, I think that L and N are flipped. Um, that's just my personal opinion, I bet. Uh, but LN is natural log. That's why you see the LN button. LN is log base E. Log base E is LN. Those mean the same thing. Just like f of x means y, log base E means LN. You can, you can think of those things being the exact same thing. Uh, natural logarithms have the same properties as log base 10 and all other logarithms. If you add with them, you multiply. If you subtract with natural log, you divide. If you take a power on a natural log, you bring it out for a multiply. If you have a natural log within an E, it will cancel. 
you know, all of those things that we know about logarithms, we can apply to the natural logarithm as well. I've got the graph here for us. Here is the graph of ln of x and e to the x. Again, they are, since they are inverses of one another, they do have that reflection through the line y equals x. But my blue line is e to the x, and my red line is log base e of x, or in other words, the natural log of x, ln of x. Okay? And again, the natural log is just something that occurs naturally, something that occurs in nature uh, quite often. Um, let's work with this in terms of our algebraic properties of logarithms. This may seem like, oh man, I got to do something real funky with this. But I bet we can see it if we change what ln looks like. What I mean by that, I mean that ln is really synonymous with log base e. Log base e of e to the 0.15t. What do you notice? They cancel. Same logarithm base as exponent base, they will cancel to be just 0.15t. And that's my answer. Okay. Same thing here. Just have to be a little bit careful about this. Um, I've got e to the three times log base e of x plus one. Now, what's stopping me from canceling is this three. What can I do with that three? It's in front of a logarithm, so where can it actually go? Up in the exponent, right. I can take this in front of the logarithm and put it up in the exponent up there. So this is really equivalent to saying e to the log base e of x plus 1 to the third power. Now I can cancel. Look, e to the log base e, that's that property of exponent base as log base. They will cancel leaving us with just x plus 1 to the third, and I'll be lazy and uh, multiply that out. Yeah. All right. Last property here again. What do we do when we're adding with logarithms? We multiply. So just to demonstrate the property here, this is... Uh, ln of e to the 2x times e to the x. Right? You multiply these numbers together. Well, that's equivalent to saying e to the what? What do I do when I'm multiplying like bases? What do I do with the exponent? Add them. So 2x plus x is 3x. And now we can simplify that. ln of e to the 3x is just simply 3x. Why is that the case? Well, isn't ln really equivalent to log base e? Right? And that will cancel. Now, this is 7, 6, day 1. 7, 6, day 2, and, and the last little problem that we have here is just application of natural logarithms and, and exponential base e, okay? So I'm going to show you the first application. Um, you know how we were talking about um, the compound interest formula, and I said, okay, if I was going to compound your money at one year, and then maybe I was more generous and I was going to compound it half a year, and then monthly, then daily, then every second, right? What if I had said this? What if I had said, okay, I'm going to even do it faster than every second? What if I'm faster than every half second? I mean, we have computers that can calculate really small amounts of time now. So what if I had said, I'm going to continually compound that bank account for you? It's, I'm, I'm always going to be compounding your money. I'm not just compounding at certain points of the year. I may be paying it back to you because the bank will wait for the end of the, end of the month and just give you your interest that it is calculated monthly. But it's continuously compounding your interest for you. Okay, That formula is demonstrated by 
I'll call it the, the PERT formula. Okay? When you continuously compound interest, okay, that means that it's happening faster than every second, faster than every half second, more times than every millisecond, whatever, whatever smallest amount of time you can think of, even faster than that. When it's happening like that, that's the naturally occurring base going on. That's why there's an E within the formula. That's why the base of your exponential function is an E, not like a 2 or a 3. It's an E. A is the total amount. P is your principal. Remember, principal in terms of bank accounts and money and loans is always the original amount. R is your rate in terms of a decimal. And T is the time. So, for example here. What is the total amount for an investment of $500 invested at 2.25% interest for a total of 40 years? Well, if I know this to be true, if it's compounded continuously, we know that the formula A is equal to P times E to the RT is going to calculate the interest. It's going to calculate your total amount. So let's plug it in. Let's see what we know. Uh, the investment is 500 bucks uh, times e to the the rate is 0 0.0525. Remember, put it as a decimal to the t power times 40 times e to the rt rate times the time. All right, and we can go in here and we can say, uh, well, that would be 500 times e to the, I use my fancy e to the button, 0 0.0525 times 40. So if I invest $500 and the bank tells me that it's going to compound continuously, and I invest it for 40 years at a rate of 5.25%, it's going to be over $4,000 in 40 years. $4,083.08. Okay. Oh. Ding, 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 there goes the bell. <laughs> so long, everybody.